I think if the church gets back to him, she'll be attractive as she was in the first century, where people are basically knocking on the doors saying, what must I do to be saved? Right now, this is a very unstable age, and so people want to know what's true. So yes, I pray that there is a revival among God's people, which will then result in a great awakening among the lost. I pray that that happens. If that doesn't happen, then we're going to continue to see the downward spiral of America. Hey folks, Eric Stackelbeck here. Welcome to this very special clip from The Watchman Show on TBN. Are the prophetic chess pieces moving into place and are we living in Bible times? Pastor Jack Hibbs is here to break down what comes next for the United States and for Israel and why Christians should be encouraged in the face of the gathering storm. Now, Pastor Jack is a good friend and a true watchman on the wall. He's the senior pastor at Calvary Chapel Chino Hills in Southern California and author of the new book, Countdown, All Eyes on God's Ultimate Endgame, which I strongly encourage you to pick up. He's also host, of course, of Real Life with Jack Hibbs. Be sure to subscribe to Pastor Jack's channel right here on YouTube. So. What comes next on the prophetic time clock? What role does Israel play in the days ahead? And how close are we to that war that the prophet Ezekiel said would unfold on the mountains of Israel in what he called the latter days? Pastor Jack Hibbs breaks it down. Take a look. The deconstruction of morality. Right. Could you unpack that a little bit for us? Tell us where we were as a nation, yeah. where we're at now in terms of our moral compass, and our faith. You think about, first of all, the United States of, uh, of yesteryear, where we were. And if you want to go way back, you can go back to the founding of this nation where a lot of people no longer know or they don't want to know that the founding of this nation was built upon Judeo-Christian values. The pulpits proclaimed freedom and liberty based upon God's word. According to Sam Adams, Samuel Adams said that that's where he got the concept and the understanding of political freedom because he had heard a sermon that the Israelites were delivered from the tyranny of Pharaoh. And it was Samuel Adams who saw that the colonies were under the boot, as it were, of King George. A lot of people don't even realize this. But moving forward, I remember growing up in the day when all businesses in America were closed on Sundays. You had to get gas in your car on Saturday if you wanted to do anything on Sunday. And there was a reverence. Uh, we, back in those days, we had presidents and congressmen and senators who openly asked the nation to pray. Yeah. I mean, think about it. When was the last time we had a presidential uh, declaration or proclamation of prayer, yeah. for example. America has drifted away from God. I don't think it takes a spiritual Einstein to figure that out. We look around now at a culture that is imploding upon itself because there's no moral upinnings yeah. to strengthen us. In other words, you know this well with your incredible coverage and time in Israel, that when there is no king, right, when there's no authority, when God is not the focal point, every man does what is right in his own eyes. That defines America today. It's everyone wanting to do what's right in their own eyes. Why? Because the decay has happened because we have lost touch with God. And to whom much is given, much is required. Oh, my. I think that often with the United States and just being here in Southern California, the natural beauty. Yes here and the blessings here, do you see any potential for a larger revival in the U.S.? Some people have said, hey, there will be a revival, but within the church, actually, you're actually seeing that at your church, in a sense. You've baptized over 3,000 people during COVID alone. Yeah. But do you see the opportunity for a larger nationwide revival, or has the ship kind of sailed? Because I've read uh, the book of Jonah, I always have hope. Yeah. <laughs> At the last moment, God can choose to do something. I believe that God is waiting to hear from the Christian, from the pulpit. Uh, remember, he says, if my people who are called by my name, he's not asking the heathen to call out to him. He's asking for his own to call out to him. At any moment, we could do that. And we know from the book of Jonah that God could press pause. Remember, judgment was declared upon the Ninevites but because of their repentance, he pressed pause. It's possible that God could 
grant us grace and mercy. I pray the church is going to have to get very orthodox. We've got all kinds of goofball doctrines running around. And we've got a lot of wokeism that has permeated the church and the yep. pulpit today. But I think if the church gets back to him, she'll be attractive as she was in the first century, where people are basically knocking on the doors saying, what must I do to be saved? Yeah. Right now, this is a very unstable age. And so people want to know what's true. So yes, I pray that there is a revival among God's people, which will then result in a great awakening among the lost. I pray that that happens. If that doesn't happen, then we're going to continue to see the downward spiral of America until we will be a nation that no longer, for example, loves and supports Israel. I, at that moment, would, as it were, wash my hands. The relationship between the U.S. and Israel is the only thing that's keeping the U.S. from going down right now. And I base that off of Genesis 12. Yeah. So critical time, big decisions to make. Will America turn back to God? Uh, we'll see. Pastor Jack, I love you because you're a straight shooter and you tell it like it is. And this is no time to mince words. No. The times, these are Bible times that we're yeah. living in now. You talked about the doctrine or lack of sound doctrine in a lot of American churches today. You've sounded the alarm about the lack of prophetic teaching right. in American churches. Unpack that a yeah. bit more for us. Disturbing in, in these prophetic times in which we're living, oh. yet the pulpits are largely silent on the issue. Not your pulpit, of course, yeah. but many across the country. Three things Paul the Apostle warned the church uh, before his passing. He said, don't be ignorant regarding spiritual gifts. He said, don't be ignorant regarding demonic activity and don't be ignorant about prophetic things. And he mentions this uh, most beautifully in 1 Thessalonians. But when we talk about prophecy or prophetic teachings, we're not talking, you and I are not speaking about, hey, let me tell you your future, yeah. like some guru type of thing. No, we're talking about the fact that this Bible, uh, scholars bicker between, is it 27 or 33% of this book that's prophetic? Hey, they can bicker all they want. The point is more than a quarter of this Bible is prophetic in nature. And here's what's fun about this. How do I know for sure that I'm going to make it to heaven based upon what Jesus preached in the gospel? How do I know that? How do I know uh, if God's going to keep his word? Number one, Bible prophecy. The prophecies that have been fulfilled, those prophecies were written in the scriptures and they were fulfilled literally. The big home run hitter is God says in the last days, before I return, I'm going to draw Israel back to its homeland. And Isaiah says that that's going to happen in one day. And what happened? May 14th, 1948. In one day, one day, Israel's declared a nation again. I'm a big believer, and this raises some eyebrows, but let, let it go. If, a lot of people are saying, well, you know, the church has replaced Israel. That's, that's replacement theology. That's bad news. If God doesn't keep his promises to Israel, then I have no assurance he'll keep his promises to me. But he will keep his promises to Israel. Thus, I have full confidence that in these days that we're seeing the alignment of events being set up. I like to look at it as the chess pieces are being placed on the table now. We can recognize globalism. That's right. We can recognize where the dollar is evaporating and we're seeing the call for a worldwide currency. Yeah, a digital currency. A digital currency on top of it, which plays right into Revelation 13. Yeah. When I see these things forming, what I draw excitement from is Jesus said, when you begin to see these things come to pass, look up because your redemption draws near. So these are prophetic times. As believers, we should be so excited, not fearful. At your great prophecy conferences at your church, you've been talking about Israel's role and what's coming prophetically. And you've talked a lot about the war of Gog and Magog. Funny name, but people needed to know it. Uh, laid out in the book of Ezekiel chapters 38 and 39. Right. Seems that we see, as you would say, the chess pieces moving on the board right now. We see Russia at Israel's northern doorstep, Iran, Turkey, this coming together of these really traditional rivals. What do you see when you look out at the landscape of the Middle East right now and Israel's place in it? It says in Ezekiel that in the latter days that there's going to be this leader. Gog is a, a word that implies that he's both political and military leader. 
Uh, it's all wrapped up into one guy. I'm not saying it's Vladimir Putin, but I'm right. saying it is a Putin type. We know this. For sure. He's got to come from the, uh, the northern parts of Israel in this battle. Ezekiel says that he will be a guard unto these associated nations, which I think there's about five. I may be off no, one or two. Right. One of the key nations is Persia, which is Iran, Persia. And it says that God, G-O-D, will put a hook in the jaw of Gog and pull them out of the uttermost parts of the north into the mountains of Israel with these other nations that are named by name in the Bible, Libya being one of them, to destroy Israel. And the scripture says that God will rise up in defense of Israel when that happens. Yeah. Eric, it's an amazing moment because the scripture is clear that when this happens, the scales from the Israelis' eyes will begin to fall and they're going to see that yeah. he is the Lord that watches over Israel. And the Bible tells us 5 6 of the invading army this enemy force that comes to annihilate Israel are destroyed. Remarkable. They perish on the mountains of Israel. And the God of Israel is going to show himself to the world in a very public way <laughs> yeah. like he hasn't in 2,000 yes. years. Yes, yes. We're talking about revival. It seems, man, as you said, Pastor Jack, a revival could be sparked in Israel in the wake of that incredible I, victory. I believe it's clear. From no. God Almighty, the victory. It seems that that Iran nuclear deal and Israel's refusal, rightly so, to allow Iran to acquire the bomb, it seems like that could be a trigger as well. Maybe Absolutely. in the run-up to Ezekiel, you and I have talked about this for years, and that's been kind of a slow-moving train, that Iran nuclear program. Now it seems like yes. we're reaching end game there, and Israel may be forced to act. Israel, as you and I, we've walked that land together for mm -hmm. years. That land does not have the liberties that America has. We're flanked by two massive seas, we have a lot to be able to fudge with. Israel can't. Israel, the size basically of New Jersey. Right. Here's this little sliver of God's people in this location that are surrounded by a very hostile group of neighbors. Tough neighborhood. Who have sworn their destruction. And so uh, Israel is well able to act preemptively when necessary. We've seen this in its history. Are we going to wake up any moment to see this in the news? Maybe so. But I got to tell you, you know this better than I do. The United States and its policies right now is actually making things worse in the Middle East and actually facilitating war. Because with this administration, it's not causing Israel to feel so safe, but it's also emboldening the ones who not only said, listen, we're giving them money and they've said, we're going to destroy Israel and then you. Little Satan and great Satan, in their words. What in the world is going on? So, I mean, that could lead into the decline of America. I mean, it could really lead, and maybe we're on our way. You said it earlier, Genesis 12, 3. Yeah. It's non-negotiable. I will bless those who bless you. I will curse those who curse you. It's very clear. Very clear. Hey, you break it down the book beautifully, Pastor Jack. Countdown, all eyes on God's ultimate endgame. It's an easy read. As you and I said, it's almost a slightly larger track, That exactly which is a great right. thing. Exactly right. Read it and pass it along to others. I love your preaching, Pastor, because you always end on an encouraging note. God Almighty is still yeah. on the throne. <laughs> Give us our marching orders right now and, and some encouragement uh, as we close here and what we can do as believers as we kind of navigate these very uncertain times, but exciting times for the body of Christ. Paul told the church at Rome, these things have been written that you, well, these things that have been written down have been brought to pass so that you might have strength and hope in the scriptures. John said, these things have been written that you might know that you have eternal life. Again, the believer should be bold and strong Right now at a time like this, we've got truth and we've got hope. And so as we look around at what's going on, this is our moment. This is our hour. This truly is. And so if you don't go to a Bible teaching church, go find one. Yeah. But by all means, continue to fellowship. Don't forsake the assembling together of the saints. Support Israel in prayer. Get involved in what's called righteousness. When the Lord comes or when we go to see him, we want to be busy about our father's business. I want to get caught doing good. And so uh, this is just a thrilling time. And, and so to be a Christian, I'm watching, we're watching Bible prophecy 
uh, form in front of us, and that just causes us to be more confident more than ever. Hey, everyone. Thanks for checking out the Watchman Newscast. If you enjoyed this episode and want to see more, make sure you go ahead and hit the like button, click subscribe, and tap the bell icon to turn on notifications for new Watchman Newscast episodes every weekday.